The White House is planning to ban the sale of flavored e-cigarettes, which would only allow companies to sell strictly tobacco-flavored e-cigarettes. Federal guidelines are pending, and once announced, companies would have 30 days to comply. According to the National Youth Tobacco Survey, these numbers are staggering. Three million high school students used e-cigarettes in 2018, but that number has likely climbed since. We have Dr. John J. Villa here. He is with us today. He is a pulmonologist at Hackensack University Medical Center. I can't wait for you to break all this down. I'm a mom of two young kids, and I don't quite understand it all. So let's first start with where you think we are as a country. Do you think that we are in an emergency health crisis? Yes, I think this is an epidemic we're facing right now, okay. and we don't have enough information. What did you think of Governor Murphy's announcement there? I think our policymakers should help us uh, from a public health point of view mm -hmm. to make regulations to prevent our children today from using this product. You know, I remember when vaping came out, we thought that this was a good alternative to smoking. Will yes. you break down what it is actually doing, and does it still hold true that it is better than smoking a, a traditional cigarette? So again, it may be better. However, there are many chemicals, medical, me, uh, metals in these e-cigarettes which may be harmful to the lung, causing acute lung injury. So now that vape smoke that you see here inhaling into your lungs, is that the same as what you would be getting if you inhaled a cigarette? So there are less toxins and chemicals potentially in an e-cigarette. However, the being absorbed directly into the lung could cause heart problems, uh, lung problems, or brain problems. Let's talk about this pneumonia that is now popping up. Explain the name and, and what it is. So it's probably more of a pneumonitis and inflammation in the lung. Okay. Pneumonia suggests it's an infection. As okay. far as we know, this is not an infection. We think this is an inflama inflammation in the lung. Uh, so far, the reports suggest many different types of inflammation, so it's not clear. Is it one product or numerous chemicals and products causing this? It's not clear yet. So you mentioned that. How will we determine that? Is that just going to be over a matter of time that we determine if it's the chemicals or if it's the way it's actually uh, inhaled into the lungs? So it's, it's potentially both. I mean, remember, an e-cigarette has heat, has chemicals, it may have metals, has nicotine. So all these are being absorbed by the lung, and it's not what the lung is designed for. And now we're talking about that, and that actually is a great segue to my next question. You have all of these flavors known, you know, as e-juice, and that's what's really appealing to the youngsters. Yes. So now. What is in, in that liquid? Is it something that's more extreme than just the tobacco uh, flavors that Governor so, Murphy? So there's many volatile organic chemicals. These things are very irritating to the lung, and the lung sees it as a foreign, a foreign substance, so it causes inflammation. Is there nicotine in the flavored ones as well? So they feel that most e-cigarettes do have nicotine. Even e-cigarettes that have been denoted having no nicotine have been shown to have nicotine. The FDA has not yet confirmed that vitamin E acetate, am I saying that correctly, is causing this actual lung, lung damage. But we also have a statement that we want to read for them. So let's go through this first, and then we can circle back around. They don't know that if this is what's causing the problem because consumers cannot be sure whether any THC vaping products may contain vitamin E acetate. Consumers are urged to avoid buying vaping products on the street and to refrain from using THC oil. They go on to say that no use should be vaping regardless of the substance. So I guess that leads us now also into the marijuana question, specifically the chemical of THC. Ingesting it this form, is it more extreme than if someone were to, uh, you know, smoke a traditional joint, if you will? So again, it's not clear yet. All this data is very new. Uh, a lot of these um, syndromes came out this summer that we started noticing it. And again, the, the uh, syndromes we saw from Wisconsin and Illinois, a high percent were used in THC. And again, but they don't know what was in the product. Mm. And, and maybe that's the difference. Let's talk about... Um, going to an actual licensed dispensary. We're seeing more people get their medicinal marijuana cards. Is it safer than to get your vaping products from a licensed distributor? Do you then have less of a risk of contracting any issues? I, I think right now they should avoid smoking it. Period. Or vaping it, yes. Okay. Until we, we further understand it. How long do you think it will take for us to be able to wrap our minds around the effects of this? We need more research. It's still, we, you said the numbers before, the numbers are still low, but staggering, increasing very fast. And it's, it's st shocking to me to think that all these years we have been able to push kids away from smoking, and now this has become almost a, 
um, a second an acceptable wave. a second wave of what's being done and seen. So what would you say as far as research, money, allocation to have this uh, further looked at? Oh, well, obviously we have to let the uh, researchers do what they do best. Obviously we need the allocation of funds to do it. Mm -hmm. We have to let, at least with the THC question, let the schools do the research on it. It's very federally controlled what can be done on these products. And I think it's important to note if someone is vaping and they happen to be watching this, what are some of the side effects or the signs that they can look for in themselves to think like, maybe I should go to a doctor? So cough, shortness of breath, chest pain. Uh, they also get GI symptoms, nausea, vomit, abdominal pain. They could get weight loss, fevers, fatigue, okay. and it could develop over a couple weeks. Oh, that quickly. All right. Dr. Villa, thank you so much for thank being you. here. We appreciate it. Thank you very it. much.